Hey folks, Harry here, the irrational loser, and in today's Survival Minecraft, we take on the arduous task of building some fields of crops, gathering animals that are all over the world, and replanting all of our saplings back where they should be. So let's get on to it. So first things first is, we need to find an area that is suitable to build the things we want. Now, we've got lots of animals, and you may have noticed that there is a lot more chickens than there should be. That's because these little things here will hatch no matter what. Yeah. Sounds kind of disastrous. Yes, these things will hatch for us over time. That's why there's so many chickens out and about right now and very little things like sheep and pigs. There's cows and things like that, but the chickens will continuously, continuously hatch the eggs. Yeah, it's fun. Let's get going. It's about to turn night time, so I'm going to head over to our base of operations and pick out some seeds. So in my chest here, I've got loads of carrots, some potatoes, some beetroot seeds and wheat seeds. Now I need sticks, a lot of sticks, and I am going to need a lot of iron so we can make eight hoes from this. I need water, I will need some shears for leaves, and I will probably need some form of lighting, but I don't have a lot available right now, and it is probably going to be one of those things that I will get and add as we go along. So, over to our iron farm, we'll see what we have available in regards to iron. Shoosh, that's a lot. More than what I thought we were going to have, but here we go. So, some shears for some leaves and the rest into some iron hose because they're one thing we're going to use up extremely fast. Just use the shears on the leaves like so, and it will drop the leaves themselves. These won't despawn when you place them back down, which is really handy for things like fences or waterlocked blocks and things like that, which is what I'm going to be using them for. But as soon as you get past a certain point of these trees, they will start despawning. So you need to be either quick or cautious. I would rather be cautious than quick because you can get more by doing that. I also need to chop down these trees and hopefully replant any of the ones that we do get dropped. Because we are always going to need wood, no matter what. This world is going to be built in a lot of wood. And I mean a lot, a lot of wood. Right, so remember, always plant down your saplings so that you can always get more trees. I think today we will hopefully try and get something sorted for that and a place to kind of build the starter tree farms. Nothing like huge and major. So, yeah. I'm going to jump back into our wee house here just so that we can be a bit safer. Jump in the corner here and I'm going to use free cam here which is F4 on my keyboard. I'm going to fly around and see what we've got and see if we can can I put anything in the area? No. It looks like we have a lot of desert -y, sandy beaches area. And probably a lot of water around us as well. Which is one of the problems with playing in vanilla, pure vanilla, is you can never ever ever see what you've got around you unless you use external sources like the website Chunkbase, which I do use a lot. But it is a lot handier when you have very, very minimal mods like FreeCam, which can just let you just see what you have around you. So I'm going to head in this direction. I see some pumpkins there, which I am going to harvest because these pumpkins can be used extremely well in farms and things like villager trades with farmer villagers for some amazing food sources. See what I mean with the chickens? Don't know, I might get rid of that mod, I don't know yet, but to be honest, it's so handy just to have. You think you can get all those chickens together and then they'll just reproduce themselves and you don't need to worry about growth. Why are you all the way over here, cat? I know, it's strange. We have a beehive here. Nice, that's good, but that's straight out to the ocean. Which is not what I am looking for. 
So we'll head up in this direction, see what we have, and hopefully, hopefully it is a lot better than what we've got just now. So this is actually one of the reasons why I told you to build your iron farm in the spawn chunks. Because if you do go exploring, I will show you in a wee second here what I mean. So we're off exploring. As we go further and further away, things start to unload. Now our iron farm's just over there. But our spawn chunks, if I bring up this stuff here, I can go to spawn chunks reel here and toggle it. The green is our spawn chunks. So you can see we're way outside them now. But that iron farm should still be working as we explore out and around here. I think we might be on an island. And that to me is really annoying. Because I really didn't want to do an island survival series. It would be fun to try and do. But I honestly don't think it's a good one to do. Especially if I'm trying to showcase a way to kind of survive in the minecraft right good i don't think it's an island that's good so we do have another village just coming over the horizon there and i think this area here is going to be good to just start with what i want to do so if i run back towards our spawn which is in this direction and we'll work our way along as we create more and more fields and because we have that second village over there it kind of gives me the idea of connecting a road between the two and kind of using that as a guide to what I want to build. So as you can see, our village should just be over this hill here. And the other village is just over there. So uh, a road, oh there's another beehive. A road coming from our village all the way along would kind of give us a guide on where to start. Fields and things like that. So if we get to one end of our village, we'll start this side. So we're starting the, the east side of the village. Anyway, so village is here, so it would be a, a road going up and over this hill towards the village. And I will probably start it as a, the grass path blocks because it will just be a, an, a rough outline until we can get things like packed mud and all that together to make a nicer looking road or a dirt road for it because that's kind of the idea I was having. So from our house here we're going to head over here and we will start the road about yeah we'll come from here. So I'm going to create a line from here all the way down to our village and this is just a rough line nothing majorly fancy just a guide to show me where I'm going to go. I'm not going to go the whole way just now. It's just where it's going to start. And then we can figure out where it's going to lead afterwards. Sorry, horse, you were in my way. Right, so from here, uh, I probably go about five, one, two, and then two of that side. So from this point on, it's a case of getting the hole and buckets of water and things like that and building out. I will fill up areas that I can with the uh, dirt just to give it a kind of rounded feel, make it feel more natural and so things aren't hanging over and things like that. So start this block here, we'll fill it with water, we will get some leaves and we can pop that down. That's now an unspawnable space, nothing can spawn. <sighs> can I help you? What do you- ooh! You have moss blocks as well. Actually, oh, he's got melon seeds. It would probably take me a while to find melons. So this guy turning up right now and me only having one emerald is, it's actually fate that you have turned up with those, I thought you'd left. With those melon seeds, Emil, thank you so much. Don't care about anything else. Those melon seeds will be a massive contribution to things like farms. All right, so got the wheat seeds, got the iron hoe, got the bucket, we need some more water in it. And it's just a case of me hoeing and planting, hoeing and planting and getting all of this kind of leveled up. So I'm going to go through about two stacks of wheat seeds and then move on to carrots and things like that. Put a break between the fields and stuff just so that it feels a bit more natural and that'll make it look a lot nicer. 
So let's get going with that. Okay, as you can see, we didn't get very far, and that's just because we don't have a lot of resources. But when this grows up, and these all grow up, there'll be hundreds of resources, and we can continually expand, covering this whole place in fields. Or at least that's the plan. Don't know if we'll get to that point in a while. Anyway, what I do need to now figure out is water placement. Now, that sounds a bit easier than you think, and it is. You just need to find places that have dry patches or things are falling apart like these ones are. You can either do like this and add the the leaves or you can come to this bit, dig out a wee bit of the, the dirt, place it under this one and then put your dirt back in. This will work as well and it also gives you access to the water just in case you may need it. Now problem with these guys are they're trampling a lot of stuff. But it shouldn't matter too much. When you come through again and you find this sort of stuff, you just you just find what it is and replace it. Now this is where the hedge is going to go along this bit. I did miscalculate when I done this one here, but this is where the hedge will go. It won't be one block high, it'll be about two in most places, going all the way along. And this is just to give it a wee bit of natural feel because when you, you drive out in the country especially here in Scotland you usually get these big massive hedgerows that go along the road or walls so I'm choosing to use hedgerows because it is more of a natural feel and it gives a windbreaker sort of style thing to it so if I can kind of keep with that style uh, that's what I'll do yeah sometimes you might find these sort of things yeah that's the kind of the idea that I'm going with on that I just need to be careful not trample on anything when I'm running about and just take my time with things and yeah, find places to put some buckets of water. Uh, it currently looks like it's trying to rain. Hopefully it's not thunder and lightning and I don't need to go save anybody. So I'm going to quickly go around, find some dry spots like this one here. Now this one's doing this because it is not level with us. So one, two, three, four. If that was level, it would get water, but it won't because it's not. And this one's only getting to about here. But if I think about it, I could just take this down one block. Make it look a bit nicer. Yeah. So yeah, you can fiddle about with things like that as well. I'm keeping this here just for the aesthetics sort of thing. Uh, I ran out of seeds again, but it looks like... That might just be reaching this one. This turns to like the brown soil and it's getting logged with water. I don't know yet. It's a case of looking and seeing. How's the rest of it looking? So this bit all over here is completely dry. So I'm going to need to go up to here. I will put a bucket of water under this here. I will log it with the, the leaves. Add the dirt. Reho it, and I think that will get quite far down. Because it goes down, it doesn't go up. It's a, it's a weird thing. But actually, no, that's kind of true in real life. Water flows down the way. So if you have soil, it'll flow down. It'll go one, two, three, four. It might hit that, or it might just be a, to this one. Because that might be five, technically. 
But if that is the case, I can just get under there and add a bucket in there, maybe? Yeah. And that will get all of it. Really? Oh. Uh, so while we are waiting for things to grow, it's best to get other things going as well. So pumpkins are a big a big commodity with the farmer villagers, so we need some pumpkin seeds. We got the melon seed from the watering trader. It's a shame that he had to leave. Um, I mean, he did have some other stuff that I could have got, but we do need to get them down. Now, the problem with these... Hello, can I help yous? Um, I don't... Uh, let's let's try and let's try and pull them over towards the iron golem farm. Thank you. Right, the iron golem got him. That's fine. Right, you over here. Or oh, you could just attack each other. That'd be even better. Perfect. Right, let's go and sleep. I mean, at least the iron golem farm's coming in good for something. And that's taking out some of those guys. Because we do not want to deal with them just yet. But at least we can now sleep. And we can go and... I just heard another one. What? Where? You. And thankfully that's not one of the captains. So the captains are the ones with the banners. Killing them with your sword or the last hit of a bow will give you a, a, a really bad surprise. Specifically something called Bad Omen and that will trigger something called a raid in the world and that will cause a lot of harm to your villagers and possibly yourself. Hey, we get some rain this time. Right, so we pick out a wee spot, pull up two of these things down and we're going to pop one of our melon seeds in and a pumpkin seed in and we can just let them grow and we can harvest them every now and again. It's not something that needs to get majorly done right now, like a big massive farm, because that will take too much time to get them going. Another one you need to do is these sugar canes. Sugar canes are good for two things, sugar and paper. Now, paper is good for firework rockets and sugar is good for cakes, which you'll probably never use, but they are extremely helpful. So getting these growing fast is going to be so much better better than waiting when you actually need them. So that's something I would say at the very start of every world is get this sort of stuff sorted quick as possible because if you're waiting down the line it's going to take a long time. So I am actually quite lucky that I'm kind of on a river kind of thing that allows me to get a lot of sugarcane very quickly and allows me to distribute it evenly across all of the, the land that it can go on, making it a bit easier for me, especially when I'm going to need this stuff very, 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 very much later. Now, if I could get some bamboo, that would be even better, because bamboo is one of those annoying ones to grow, and although they are quick, it's just a pain in the neck to grow them. But once you've got so much of it and you can create automation with it, it's a cinch. But getting that started is a hassle. So I don't know if there is any bamboo close to us. But we do have something just off in the distance here that may possibly have a bit of bamboo in it. So I'm going to go over to this and check it out. So let's go and see. So as you can see, this is what I'm talking about here. Just off in the distance here, this is a shipwreck. A shipwreck is good for two things. Moss and bamboo, which is a resource, and something called a treasure map. Now treasure maps are quite rare, but most ships will spawn them. The only problem is, every now and again, it may be what's known as a duplicate map, which is really, really annoying. But the quickest way we're going to go over there is actually on a boat itself. So we can craft a wee oak boat here, grab our crafting table back up, because we will always need a crafting table no matter where we go, and we will pop the boat down and we will sail on over there. So as you can see as we're pulling up here, we have this golden chest here. There are for a few more in there as well. This one here should have, this has got the very treasure map in it, Perfect, and it's not that far from where we are. 
we need to head southeast, which is pretty much where our village is. And because the circle, the white circle you see on it, up in the top left hand corner, is fairly big, means that we are very, very close to it. We'll know how close we are to it, if as the closer we go, the more the map will fill out. So that is handy to kind of gauge how far we are. So we're not too far away, but we are still far enough away that we're not in range of the distance that is needed to start filling the map in. Now, there is another chest in here. This is the one that may have the bamboo in it. It doesn't, but we have some suspicious stew, some wheat and some paper, and I think one of the better ones, coal, which is really handy to have. Now, every now and again, you might get lucky with a third chest, but this one is missing the section where the third chest would be. And in this chest, you may get things like iron, iron nuggets, gold, lapis. And yeah, it's quite a handy thing to try and find in your first world. So let's head back. I'm going to eat this suspicious stew because it is actually part of the advancements. If you hit L and you come into your husbandry one here, you've got the, a balanced diet. Eating 40 items is something that is really good and it will get your achievement and your advancement and things like that. So you can eat these and you're done. So you only need to eat one by eight two for the fun of it. It tells you how much you're eating. So I've done suspicious stew, bread. There's 38 remaining that we need to try and find. And if there's anything in here that is edible, like say the apple, we could eat that as well. So one good thing about my mod pack is it can show you the map in your inventory, especially when you just hover over it. Now, some of them, sometimes it may require you to hold shift, but other times it may not. Another mod I have installed is actually being able to see it as you roll your boat. That is such an annoyance in real life that you can't do it. I get why they've done it, but it is super, super annoying. So it seems that we are off just over here and we are going to get stuck here by this wee torrent of water. Now it's best to use your axe on your boats because it's usually a one shot knockoff, but sometimes not. You need to be very lucky. So we're not too far away actually. We've been here before when we travel to look around for a place to start our fields. Now sometimes the maps may look like it's rivers, but it's not. It's just a deep gouge in the land, meaning it's a deep part of water. So we need our boat again. And we're going to just row over here. Not too far. Looks like it's in this chasm here right here so get on top of your boat hit your f3 screen all right and then when you look at your f3 screen you see the red block at the top left hand corner and you've got the xyz you go to the chunk relative okay and the three numbers should be nine whatever number it is and nine okay so you find those numbers right so that's nine here and then we're over in this direction here and this, if we dig down enough, will be where our buried treasure is. If you want to do it without doing this, you can look on the map just now and you can see the slither of white under the X. And that's how you can find it that way. Now this has got quite a lot of stuff in it. One of the major things you find in it is the heart of the sea. Now the heart of the sea is extremely handy to have. So is the TNT because you can make a few things with TNT and the water breathing potions and food. There is food. Back up we go, back to your boat and you can, oh no, don't get rid of your shovel. You can get rid of that buried treasure map now because you never need to worry about it. Now, I do need to worry about my shovel though. Thank you. Uh, and like I said before, there is a problem every now and again where you may get a duplicate map that will take you to the exact same spot. So just try and remember that you've been there because it won't show that you've been there on the actual second map you find it will be a brand new map you will never know that it's the same one and it can get really 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 annoying so part two consists of these guys well more than just chickens but yeah we need to move these but first things first we need 
a bit of wood to keep this lot enclosed. So yeah, let's get started with some wood. Let's see how our iron's doing. So we haven't actually checked it in a wee while since we made the hose and things like that. We've done all of the wheat fields and all that thing of stuff. Done a bit of exploring, went to go and see the shipwreck. And we have over two stacks of iron. So handy. So, so handy. But yeah, come back over here to where I've planted my trees. I am going to chop them down, get a bit of wood and replant them again. So there is a few other trees out and about in the world as well. You can go and chop down if you want to, not just the ones you've planted. Because you're going to need lots and lots of wood to get some farms or things like that built up. And one of the things we're going to need for all of our animals is fences. Now fences is going to be one of the easier things to use to hold these lot together and stop them from running away and things like that. Which doesn't sound too handy, but is really what is needed. So go to your closest crafting table with the amount of wood you've got and try and make some fence posts. Now it doesn't need to be gates, fence posts are enough and I'll show you the reason why that is. So you're going to need lots of wood. You're going to need some sticks as well, so take quite a lot of sticks and create a lot of fence posts. So I just got over a stack, so that's fine. Now I'm going to find a place to kind of hold this lot until it's time to start moving them into bigger areas. So the first one is going to be obviously the chickens. There's lots of chickens. So we'll throw down a whole load of fences like that. And I will pick up the ones that I accidentally placed. The next one is going to be sheep. Now there's not a lot of sheep around, but that's something we work on and breed up. So I don't need as big a pen for these guys at the moment. And then obviously I need one for cows and then one for the piggies. But I am running out of fences. Oh no. Have I just... I'm missing one fence. I may have some fences back home. Don't know. We'll go and just double check. No fences, but I do need some dirt to fill in some holes. And I also need a few shears just to get some wool. And this is the reason why I said you don't need fence gates or anything like that. Because honestly, this, this the way I'm going to do it is, is a lot easier. And it's a lot less hassle if things escape because you'll you if you use a gate and you open it things can spill out escape and things like that it's a hassle and a half but this way uh, it just makes it a bit easier getting this lot in so we'll cover up the holes here so nothing can escape this way like that and then i will create a little block placement like this get my seed and go around and wrangling up all those chickens again because this is the annoying part because if you go any faster than crouch speed you will lose the chickens attention and we have a lot of chickens so as long as I get at least about this amount and get them in they will obviously with the mod that we have installed hatch the eggs and we don't need to worry about all the other ones out and about. We can just kill them. Sorry, we can just humanely take them out of the, the world. And, and that will stop any lag as well. But this 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 is lag causing, so. And it's also in the spawn chunk, so that's another problem. But here we go, we're in here. We'll just jump in here. You can go a bit faster now because once this lot are in here, you don't need to worry about it. And then you just need a way of escaping. You place a block like this and make sure that there's three blocks or there's no blocks touching the fences. You can jump over. The chickens can't. Sorted. Right, I'm going to go sleep and then it's getting the sheep and the chicken, the cows in. And then I need to show you how to get the pigs in as well. All right, so at minimum you need two sheep. Two sheep is what is needed. You can breed them up and continuously get more and more sheep, which is handy in the long run. So let's get this lot. You uh, are are you joking me? That creeper just took out all three sheep that were here. Oh, that is why I hate creepers. Right, let's go and find some more sheep. There's one here. 
We'll get this guy across and in. Take out this chicken, because he's in the way. And then I just need to get out of this place, like so, and go and find another sheep. And also try not attract any of the cows. Oh, there's four over here. Perfect. All right, so this is a slow journey to get them back all the way over there, but it will be worth it in the end. So the reason I'm saying be wary of the cows as well, because the cows are attracted to the wheat, the same as sheep. But if you want to separate them all, it's best to not attract the attention of them. And that will just make life a wee bit easier for you. Because once they're all mixed together, separation is nearly impossible. You would have to literally humanely, hum, hum, humanely take the cows away. Take them to the farm in the sky. Right, jump in, get this lot in. That's five sheep. Nice. And then I can jump out here. Get rid of the dirt block. Can you get out my way, please? There we go. And now on to the cows. So cows, again, you need minimum of two. The more you get, the quicker that you can get them bred up for things. And there we go. We have two cows in here. So I can jump out of here, clear that dirt block as well. And now it's time for the piggies. Now, how do we get piggies? Because obviously this one's not attracted to the wheat whatsoever. So how do we get pigs in? Well, we need some carrots. Again, minimum of two pigs. The more, the quicker you can go. Two is fairly easy to get together and get them into a pen to get them bred up. And if you've set up your farms like we have started already, breeding this lot up is going to be a piece of cake. Now, I've set myself up in this pen. Now, it's only two blocks wide. How am I getting out? And this is where the fun part of... The wool actually comes in. So when those three died, I got three wool from it. So let's create some white carpet with it. And what we're going to do is, you're going to go to the edge or corner of your pens, the ones that touch together, place the white carpet, and you can jump up and over. <gasps> How amazing is that? Yes. So you do that for all of them. If someone didn't thank you. There we go. And you can get in but they can't get out. So I do need to clear up a few things first before we continue with anything else, but these are in. These will breed up as much as possible. This lot will, because obviously eggs hatch chickens in real life, and that's why I wanted that kind of mod in, just to make it feel more real life. Well, these last lot you do need to help a wee bit in real life as well. If you left them to their own devices, yes, they would breed and grow, but just a wee bit of help is what's done nowadays. Whereas this lot, they hatch chicken eggs. They don't breed from seeds like this lot would do with their wheats and their carrots. Now, I need to go and get a whole load of wheat and carrot, breed this lot up, think about getting where they're going to go. I know it's going to be in this area, but a big farm area is going to be amazing. And I will tell you why we need them in a wee second. So let's talk uses. So these two are your most commonly used animals in the game. They are used for a few things. Obviously sheep are used for wool, coloured wools, carpets, that sort of stuff, as well as the meat that comes from being your food. Cows, their leather is used for a lot of things like item frames, maps, signs, things like that if you're wanting to build that sort of stuff. So these two are kind of your essential ones to get in the game. Now, chickens, they're good for their food and their feathers. Their feathers can be used to make arrows, but to be honest, they are completely useless. To, yeah, they're completely useless. Food-wise, they're okay, they'll fill you up. But other than that, they're completely useless. Pigs, again, food, that's it. Completely useless. Like, come on, Mojang, update this lot. But I will grow them so that we have a big pig pen, a big cow pen, a big sheep pen, and then the chicken thing. Um, I don't know how we're going to do the chicken thing one. Probably get that as a chicken hut to collect eggs or something like that. Because the eggs can be used for cakes, but other than that, they're not actually that useful. So I would suggest, honestly, just breeding these two up for your use stuff and 
if you are wanting to build farm sort of area like I'm going to do, get the other two just for the aesthetic look and somehow keep this lot from hatching. In fact, I might take that mod out because that's... It's getting a bit overkill. But yeah, so breeding this lot is quite simple. There is about a five minute timer between each breeding period. You cannot breed again after you've breeded them if it's still within that five minute timer. Afterwards, you can breed them again, get more of the wee babies, and then breed them up and up and up and up. Thankfully, it's easy enough to do so, because I have got a lot of stuff again, and I just need to go and plant them all, and fix all that sort of stuff. So yeah, it's been fun, and I hope that you've taken quite a bit from this episode on the way that we should get our animals together, getting some crops and all that kind of grown, and remember to always plant your saplings, no matter what, because you're always going to need trees, and you're always going to need wood. But that's it for today, hope you have enjoyed, like, subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!